Welcome to Sage Audio. Today let's look at how to mix snare. But first, if you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Find fundamental and overtone. The chapters in this video are in no particular order. Now when mixing a snare, I like to find its fundamental note and boost it slightly with an EQ. Then I'll find an overtone in the high mids and boost that a little as well. The fundamental is responsible for the body of the snare, whereas the overtone makes it sharp and clear. Let's take a listen to how these simple EQ filters improve the fullness and the clarity of the snare. Saturate high frequencies. If your snare is lacking clarity in the highs, we could use saturation on the high frequencies to help it cut through. I'll use this PSP saturator to find the overtone that we discussed last chapter and saturate those frequencies and maybe emphasize the fundamental as well. Now if you saturate high frequencies, be sure to enable oversampling to avoid unwanted aliasing distortion. Let's take a listen to how the snare brightens up. If you're enjoying the video, hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. It's free and it helps us bring you more videos. Reverb and Side Transient Expansion If I have a reverb on the snare, I like to use this trick. I'll create a send or a parallel track on which I'll insert the plugin MSED to isolate the side image. Then I'll use a transient shaper to expand the transients of the side before blending in the effect. The side image created from reverb rarely has transients, so creating them gives the snare an impressive and punchy sound. Let's take a listen with the effect higher in the mix before blending it in. Layering snares and a sampler. Now sometimes one snare doesn't have the right sound. For that reason I like to layer snares using a sampler. This way, multiple samples trigger whenever the snare's MIDI is present, causing a complex and robust sound that I'll collectively process later on to sound cohesive. Now let's take a listen to how layered snare samples creates an impressive snare. Utilize channel strips. If you want to quickly mix a snare, you can combine some of the forms of processing that we've discussed so far by using a channel strip. I'll use this one to introduce some mild degradation, boost the frequencies that we discussed in chapter one, and saturate with a pre. Then we can add some compression with makeup gain to bring peaks down and the quieter aspects of the snare up. Let's take a listen to how a channel strip quickly covers a lot of the bases for the snare. Layer short and long reverb. Now when adding reverb to a snare, I like to start with a short reverb full of early reflections. This is gonna thicken the snare and make it sound complex and impressive. Then I'll add a longer reverb to give the snare a larger and stylistic sound. Let's take a listen and notice how combining these two effects creates a complex snare. Today's video is brought to you by Patrick Von Gobel, a talented and versatile guitarist that specializes in guitar solos and high quality recordings. On his Fiverr page, you'll notice what he charges for three guitar solos and that you retain the copyright for these solos. So check him out using the link in the description and let's take a listen to his playing. Eleven seventy six compression on snare. If you want a punchy snare, one of the best ways to achieve it is with an eleven seventy six compressor. By utilizing a short attack and release, then pushing the signal into about five dB of compression, we impart harmonics onto the snare's transients, creating a super punchy sound. Let's take a listen and notice how the snare sounds more front, aggressive, and how the transients are emphasized.
If you're enjoying the channel, use the search box to watch more of our videos. Upward compression on snare. Upward compression is going to capture quieter aspects of the snare, usually some of the higher frequencies that are lower in amplitude than the fundamental. Now, to make the effect even more pronounced, place the 1176 compressor before it to create an incredibly full sound. Let's take a listen and notice how upward compression makes it easier to hear the finer, often lost details of the snare. Ensuring snare is in key. If we know the key of our song, we can ensure that the snare is in key as well. By monitoring the frequency response shown on the EQ, we can observe if the fundamental occupies an in-key note. If not, we can pitch shift the snare. Be sure not to shift the snare too aggressively if you want to preserve the snare's details. Let's take a listen to a snare that's out of key and one that's in key. reverb and air frequencies. If you want your snare to sound airy and ethereal, I'd recommend starting with a brighter plate reverb. Then follow the reverb with an EQ that emphasizes air frequencies. Fresh air is a good free option, and if used subtly, will augment the needed frequency ranges. Let's take a listen to the snare, starting with the reverb on, and then we'll enable fresh air. If you have a mix that you need mastered, send it to us to receive a free mastered sample of it with the link in the description. Thank you so much for watching.